Hi, my name is Lexi. Welcome back to my channel. And today is my three year update for alternate day fasting. All right, so welcome if you are new and welcome back if you are one of my longtime subscribers. Thank you for following me on this journey. I just wanted to share kind of an update. I've been alternate day fasting now for about three years. And so I wanted to share my experience and also talk today about finding your why. So just a little bit of history. I started alternate day fasting in September of 2019. And at that point I was 209 pounds and I was getting sick all the time. I would get a cold at least once a month that would last at least a few days, if not a week or two. So I was always just feeling really gross and I was tired all the time. I just really did not know how to control my weight. It felt like I was going to keep going up and up forever. Um, I have a lot of history in my family of obesity. I have some type two diabetes, I have cancer. So all of the ailments that are just so common in our world today, all running in my family for sure. Um, and I was just feeling so miserable and so out of control. And I had already started dabbling with fasting, but just could not find my groove. And I have lots of other videos on this. Um, but I just wanted to start alternate day fasting as kind of a last ditch effort to do something to get my weight under control and to feel better. And I honestly thought I would hate it. I thought it sounded so extreme and so hard that I thought I was going to be white knuckling it all the way through and that I was just going to hate it, but I was going to buckle down and do it as long as like my health wasn't going to suffer. I kind of committed to six months in the beginning. Never, ever, ever did I think that I would still be doing it three years later. That just blows my mind. Um, but after the first initial two weeks of getting used to it, I ended up actually really loving it. And I lost weight pretty steadily. I got to my goal weight at uh, about nine months in and I am 5'11". My goal weight is and was 175. Um, I got there pretty steadily. I mean, it was slow and it was steady, but it was uh, not too slow, not too fast. Um, so got there in about in June of 2020 and yeah, so then what happened is my health had some challenges. I had a kidney stone and then had to take some antibiotics and, um, some other things with some dental work that affected my particular system. Um, I regained about 12 pounds and then in 2021, I had a really hard time relosing all of that, even though I was still alternate day fasting. Um, I think there was just some imbalances that had happened in my body and it was making it difficult to get that weight back off. Um, and now I, I have kind of slowly been making my way back there without being obsessive about it because I realized at some point along the way that I could easily get back to that goal weight if I did certain things. Like if I changed my diet um, to manipulate my weight to get back to that point, I definitely could have, but I didn't want to do anything that was unsustainable that I didn't want to do long term. So I have been really careful about pushing myself too hard or like, you know, beating my body into submission to get to that goal weight. I have just been learning and trying to figure out what works for me and what are the small changes along the way that I want to make long term that make me feel good, that I enjoy, that makes my life better. Um, and so basically what that means is that Currently, I am at about 177 to 178, so I'm a few pounds above my goal weight, um, but I am in my like goal range, which I always thought I would want to kind of end up in the 170s somewhere, um, so I'm really happy with where I am right now. I don't know where my body will end up. I imagine that at some point I will get back to that 175, but I don't know when that will be or how long it will take, and that's totally okay with me. Um, and that has been a journey of discovery and just mindset shift and paradigm shift that I have had to slowly come to, and I hope for you that you will be able to do that as well, to just sort of move beyond the scale as the be-all, end-all of your journey. 
Um, currently I am, I took a screenshot of my, um, life app statistics and ever since I started alternate day fasting and I, again, I had been fasting before this, but I started using the life app when I started alternate day fasting. And so it has kept track of my, um, statistics over that time. So you can see that I am, as uh, according to this app, I've fasted 18,162 hours. 11,288 hours in ketosis, and that's 573 fasts. Um, and yeah, and right now, as I'm making this video, I'm over 40 hours fasted. When I get home, I will break my fast in the normal way that I always do. I'm typically at 39 to 41 hours fasting in my fast. I fast two to three days a week, it just depends on what's going on, but um, I do feel my best when I do with a four, three pattern. So four days of eating, three days of fasting, but I like to throw in some five, two days because it just makes my life more flexible. and makes me feel like I'm not stuck in a routine. I think it helps uh, my body as well, just to change things up. And so uh, that's what I enjoy. So basically weight wise, since I'm at about 177 to 178, I am 30, you know, over 30 pounds down overall from my starting weight. And compared to some that have lost hundred plus pounds, that may not sound like a lot, but for me, it is, it makes a huge difference. And not only that, um, I know that had I not started doing this and had I just kept going in the pattern that I was doing before eating whenever, whatever, um, I would have been a lot higher in weight. I would have kept gaining weight. I just know it because I was stuck in this pattern of restriction and just letting go. I wouldn't call myself a binge eater, but I am kind of a compulsive eater um, and definitely a stress eater. So I would go through periods of dieting and eating less and moving more, all of that, and then piling back on more and more weight after that, just letting go. So I was stuck in that cycle and this has really helped me to break free of that. And I feel pretty confident saying that now because I've been doing this for so long. But that being said, I just want to talk today about finding your why. And I just want to tell you that being at a smaller weight has so many benefits on your body but just wanting to be smaller is not enough. It's not enough for you to go on a health and weight loss journey, to fast consistently, to stay committed. It's not going to be enough. And it's just, and I think it's because it's based on your appearance, it's surface level, it's not deep enough. And wanting to be smaller, wanting to have a lower weight, again, it has positive outcomes. It does, especially, you know, less pressure on your joints, things like that. But that gets into the deeper reason. It's not just about looking smaller, which I think a lot of people get caught up on in the beginning. Um, I listened to a podcast with Terry Lance on the Fasting Method podcast, and I will link it below. It was a fantastic episode, and she talked about about this, about finding your why and going deeper, going deeper, going deeper. So it's like, I want to be at a smaller weight. Why? Um, because I want to look better. Why? Okay. So then you get down to the deep things. And, and I think one of the aspects here is that if you don't love yourself and you're coming at this from a position of hating yourself, and wanting to be different because you just don't love who you are, then that is a problem that needs to be addressed separately and in conjunction with your fasting slash weight loss journey. Um, because if you hate yourself, eventually you're going to fail because if you're doing something good for your body, um, then you're going to sabotage that because you don't love yourself and you don't want yourself to be happy and healthy, really. Um, and I know that sounds crazy, but it's true. If you, if you have to work on these things, your relationship with yourself, then that's really important because you have to want good things for yourself and you can't just want to please everyone else because guess what? You can't please everyone else. 
this is the truth. Um, you're never going to be good enough for everyone in the whole world. Um, there's always going to be criticisms. There's always going to be someone who has something different or better than you, depending on what you're focusing on. And so if you don't find this deep love for yourself, then you won't find the peace that you need to make this sustainable because you have to do it in a way that you can keep doing it, that you feel at peace, that you feel like it's okay to deviate from your normal um, protocol without beating yourself up, without shaming yourself. Um, and so you really have to find that love and then find why you want this for yourself. Like what is the real reason that keeps you going when it's hard? Um, because again, what you look like is only going to go so far, especially with fasting because um, weight loss is tricky with fasting. Not everyone loses weight right away or fast. Um, and so it can be kind of frustrating if that's what you're expecting. But if you focus on the health and well-being and whole aspect of it, and if this is what's right for you, then then that's okay. But if you only care about what you look like, then that's not going to be okay. And you're going to abandon it. Um, and so like for me, my why I would say is that I want to be strong. I want to be healthy. I want to have health throughout the rest of my life. I want my mind to stay intact. I have witnessed, you know, many family members falling to dementia and Alzheimer's and it's really hard. It's really hard for the people around you. And I'm sure a lot of people watching have, have had firsthand experience with this. It is so hard. And that's something that if I can, I want to avoid. I want my mind and my body to be intact until the day that I die. Um, I want to just sort of age, age gracefully and at a slow rate, you know, I'm not trying to stop aging. I'm not like a huge biohacker that like wants to live forever and be like super muscular, you know, like I just want to be able to do the things that I enjoy and to be able to enjoy them <laughs> physically, to be present, to have my mind present. Uh, those are things that I want. I want to be able to enjoy time with my family, my grandkids, my great grandkids, all of those things I want to be present for. And I'm not saying that fasting in and of itself will be enough to avoid all of these negative outcomes. There are definitely other pieces to the puzzle and those are things I've been trying to work on along the way. Fasting for me is sort of just the foundation that helps me to have the presence of mind and the boundaries that I need to work on all of the other things within that framework. So what I mean by that is, um, you know, working on what I'm eating and how I exercise, how I manage stress, my sleep, all of those things in my life that I'm constantly monitoring and working on. Fasting just helps me to sort of keep going and helps clean up some of the mistakes that I make, basically. Um, I don't eat perfectly. I don't eat any particular way. I don't restrict any food groups or macronutrients. I um, just try to eat what makes me feel my best. And there are times where I do make choices that are not the best. And I just own those choices. And I say, okay, this is what I'm doing right now. I will accept whatever consequences I get. Maybe I'll make a different choice next time. So that's how I approach it. And it's worked really well for me and helped me to stay really consistent with this journey. I did a video last week on why people quit alternate day fasting. So you may want to go back and watch that. There are some uh, things that tie in with this video, but mainly for this video, I wanted to focus on the mindset shift and the the really digging deeper into finding your motivation because a lot of people I just don't think that you know people who tell me they're struggling and whatnot and people who fall off and stuff I do think that that is the piece that's missing is they haven't really figured out why they want to do this um, they may think they have a reason but it's just not enough and so you have to really dig deeper and look at your life and do some mental work to overcome um, some of those roadblocks that you may be having. 
and I do sincerely hope that you will be able to. I just think that it is so life-changing when you can come to a point of loving yourself and doing what's best for you on a consistent basis without beating yourself up when things don't go according to plan. So I hope you found that helpful and I really appreciate all of you and your support. So I will talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.